Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Screen Inside the Studio. I'm Mike Inglis. And I'm Nick Zafiri. And today we'll be discussing the war genre, as we said last week we would cover. And we're going to start off with two great movies. Good Morning Vietnam and my personal favorite, Saving Private Ryan. Good morning, Vietnam! Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. Time to rock it from the Delta to the DMZ. Is that me or does that sound like an Elvis Presley movie? Good Morning Vietnam stars Robin Williams, as I mentioned, as mentioned earlier, and it takes place in Vietnam. Uh, not so many good mornings, though, as uh, he has to deal with the ranks and sometimes seriousness of being a DJ for uh, the U.S. Army, and a lot, he has to go through a lot of struggles and hardships, and I think he does a phenomenal job in this role. There's a lot of drama. I'd almost call it a roller coaster movie, but uh, I was wondering how you had felt about this movie. Well, I think we had both agreed that it was one of Robin Williams' best movies, uh, comedy-wise and dramatic-wise, and it's really the movie that launched him into superstardom. Um, I like the fact that you know they had some serious scenes, but they really didn't shove it in your face like they could have, making the uh, the, the action that went on all the more intense. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated the anti-censorship message of this movie, even though it was really out there and obvious. You didn't feel it that much um, as like as a forced down your throat type of feel that a lot mm -hmm. of movies tend to have when it comes to a message like that. Um, but I think it worked here. Uh, do you think it was too obvious, or do you think it worked well? I mean, the only way I noticed that anti-censorship uh, deal was that I did see it online, but um, I didn't really notice it too well, so I guess it did do a good job. That's not really something I was looking for in the movie. So I would say it wasn't exactly shoved down our throats, like you said. I'd call it a success. But I mean, some people have noticed it, like you, and whoever on online uh, said it. The, one of the last things I did want to address was the ending. Now, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but uh, I kind of had a problem with the ending. Uh, what did you think before I go on a slight spiel about it? Um, it was, in my opinion, good, I guess. I mean, I didn't mind the ending whatsoever. I think it was a fitting end to what you said was a roller coaster ride of a movie. So. That's fair. I, I mean, uh, that's fair enough. I mean, the only I don't know how else to describe it without giving it away. Fair, so I yeah, that's fair enough. The only major gripe I had with this movie, uh, although the ending was, it felt empty. Uh, as yeah. as tight as the rest of the movie was, and as drama filled, it kind of like left you hanging a little bit. But it did come full circle for the most part. But I didn't. I did really enjoy this movie. It didn't. I didn't regret watching it at all. Yeah, it's definitely. I recommend the movie to any. Robin Williams fan or, you know, war film fan, or it's just a good movie overall, so I, I recommend a view. And we were discussing how it was one of Robin Williams' better dramatic characters, along with uh, One Hour Photo, if you've ever seen that movie. I think that was one of the best uh, Robin Williams characters uh, that he's ever portrayed. It had him, you've never seen the movie. No, I've not. Discussed, but I recommend it. It had him as a, uh, almost like a stalkerish. Uh, camera uh, photo developer, he would, he, d he doesn't really have a life and he would, you know, uh, the specific family he kind of targeted as his family, even calling himself uncle to them because he was just so lonely and he uh, felt like he was part of the family because he always developed their photos for him. And uh, I think it was one of Robin Williams' best movies along with Good Morning Vietnam, so it's definitely worth a watch. That's, uh, thank you for suggesting that. I actually do really want to check that out now. Um, and now we're going to check out Saving Private Ryan. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying it seems like an unnecessary risk given our objective, sir. Our objective is to win the war. Sir, I just, uh, I don't have a good feeling about this one. When was the last time you felt good about anything? Uh, Saving Private Ryan was m one of my personal favorites. I think it was one of the greatest movies ever made. And there's so much to talk about it. Where do we even begin? Uh, right off the bat, one of my favorite parts from the opening um, was in the cemetery when uh, you see the older, uh, older man going through the cemetery and you see all the um, tombstones lined up. Mm -hmm. Like the way that they're shot, that in shot is, is gorgeous. Yep. That's insane. And then the way they transition to Normandy yep. is, is great. Uh, where do you think it starts well off at? Oh, well, 
L just like you said, I mean, the, the, they really give you a beautiful shot of the cemetery. But right off the bat, that opening scene, the battle of the uh, Rangers uh, uh, going into Normandy on D-Day, I don't want to say nothing topped it because the rest of the movie was great, but it really just was an amazing scene that started it. It got um, Tom Hanks' character uh, going right away so that showed that he's this leadership, he plays this leadership role as uh, Captain Miller. And he just, he always, it seems like he always knows what he's doing. And I thought the movie was mostly um, a story about Captain Miller and not just about this Private Ryan that they don't even end up meeting until the end. So That's fair enough. Um, I think the strong, the movie's strongest trait is how human the characters feel. Yep. I think every character that you see in the movie is someone that you could meet uh, in person and have a conversation with. Like they're the most in depth I think I've ever seen like a war movie uh, have. I agree. Even with um slight like stri slight regular stereotypes, like you have the leader, you have the token who is the um, the Jewish uh, private. Mm -hmm. Um, you have the god, uh, the the Bible thumper, as I think the one sniper. of them, yeah, the Jackson. sniper, uh, who had who kind of paralleled American sniper in a way. But I thought that was kind of funny. But um, the guy from Brooklyn. Uh, the guy from yeah the the the, the Brooklyn brawler, as <laughs> gimmicks go. Um, but they still felt real, and I thought that was a really cool part of the film to like have you connect with the people. I mean, the most important. Um the most important trait of a movie is to have you care about the characters, and that's exactly what this movie did. I mean, and it, it's World War II. You, people die left and right, but I mean, the fact that you care about these characters, what's going to happen to them, especially Captain Miller, who was a fantastically fleshed out um, character. I mean, he was flawed. He, uh, he showed his, he, that he's battle-worn, having been in battle for about three years, and you know, he kept to himself. He didn't tell anybody what he was about. I thought that really enhanced the character and showed that the more he's in war, you know, the more he's going to break down, lose his compo composure. And it's definitely a scene we want to show you about how he discusses the men he lost and if it's for the greater good or not. Mm -hmm. So, Also, I, I noticed this after watching the movie, but this, the cast is star-studded. It's like filled mm -hmm. with people. You got, of course, Tom Hanks, Matt Damon. A young Matt Damon, a young... Vin Diesel, Vin too. Diesel. On top of like a bunch of other people. And it's insane, like... How even at the time, I'm sure Vin Diesel wasn't as recognized. Like yeah. how everyone's career sort of like panned out post this movie. Well, I mean, it, he's unrecognizable sort of for in the most movie part. Yeah. He's uh, he wasn't as big then. Jeremy Davies also did a great job as Upham, the uh, almost like cowardly corporal translator. If you're a Lost fan, he played Daniel Faraday, so I really uh, <laughs> enjoyed that. Oh man, this, there's just so much about this movie that yeah. works. Oh man, it is. Um, I think it's the most realistic war movie we've ever seen. Uh, I think so too. Um, I would argue that like it, it's really brutal though, and I think that's why oh, without a doubt. it it's probably the most realistic. Do you, but do you think it's like too brutal sometimes, or do you think it like fits the uh, it fits the movie perfectly? I personally think it fits. Um, you need to have the stomach for this kind of movie. I mean, it's. It's without a doubt violent. You're gonna. It's sad. It's tragic. If you're prepared to see World War II like at its grittiest, I think it how it definitely enhances the movie. And oh man, just you know. ah, this movie is so great. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I can't get enough of it. I, I I like what you said though about it. It's like how it almost deserves like a yearly, an annual viewing. Uh, that's like how good it is. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the movie at least 15 times and I'm, s I'm still fine <laughs> with watching the entire thing over again so that's perfectly fine too <laughs> I mean they have I think they they perfectly balance character development in the movie and battle scenes mm -hmm. and action and drama I mean they have scenes where it's just and I don't think the movie's slow mov moving whatsoever despite it's almost three hour running time um, Maybe even more. I'm gonna have to check up on it's that. It's like two, two minute, two hours, fifty minutes. I think. Yeah. Something along those lines. Um. I mean, every chance they get, they move the story forward by having the characters, uh, fle fleshed out even further. So I think that definitely enhances the storytelling. I think if there's one more thing I could bring up about this movie, and war movies in general, I might have mentioned this last week, but tension drives war movies. 
and I think it absolutely uh, hit the nail on the head of this one, where every time you get a bit of tension, um, you, it like works itself out and it does pretty well. To give an example, um, towards the end of the final battle scene, the tanks, the German tanks are rolling in, and the uh, the Rangers are kind of hiding like in uh, sink, uh, not sinkholes, um, just pits to ambush them, and the whole ground's rumbling, the rocks are you know, rumbling a little from the tank uh, approaching, and it definitely creates tension for the movie. And it's an absolute watch if you haven't seen it already. Make sure to check it out. Yep. So, I mean, both of those movies are great uh, depictions of two different kinds of war, or two different wars altogether. And um, I think we covered what we could about Saving Private Ryan without giving it away, because if you have not seen this movie, see it, along with Good Morning Vietnam. I was surprised how good that movie actually was. I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of Screen Inside the Studio. Uh, come back to us next week and make sure to check us out on Widener News as we did last time uh, a countdown of our top five movies of 2014. And I'm Mike Inglis. And I'm Nick Safiri.